In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. My dear brethren, do you know what is the shortest verse in the Holy Scripture? The shortest is found in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11, verse 35. In Latin, it's only three words, lacrimatus est Jesus. In English, it would be only two words, Jesus wept. So the Gospel today of St. Luke mentions this mysterious scene when our Lord weeps over Jerusalem. And he said, if this day you only knew what makes for peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. You, we see how our Lord is overcome with emotion. When he was approaching Jerusalem, and you know that the, the word Jerusalem itself means the foundation of peace, Jesus was about to bring peace to Jerusalem. Peace to the, peace to the walls, peace to the buildings, but peace to those who were living there, to the souls. He had a good view of the city. Nothing was hidden to his sight, to his divinity, to his divine knowledge. And by his, when he was weeping, he was prophetizing by the, the destruction of the city which he loved so much. He prophetized, not stone will remain on another. And again, that all the inhabitants will be massacred. So this is why there were more sadness, even in the souls that he could see. Not only the buildings themselves will be destroyed, but souls will be lost. And how would these souls will be lost? Because the things that make for peace, because so many souls will fail to recognize his visit. So many souls will just refuse him to come, to meet with them. And you see, Jesus' sadness is even emphasized because he loved these people so much. He loved the Jews so much. It was a special love. They were the first ones to whom the gospel was preached. They were the first ones who benefit of the word of God, who experienced his miracles. And most part of them failed to appreciate the grace he was offering them. So, of course, this event happened a long time ago. Of course, now things are, are totally different since the Holy Catholic Church has been instituted. But uh, there is this continuation, this continuity of uh, sorrow, of sadness in Jesus' heart. Each time he visits us, each time he offers us, he offers his grace to the souls, and that people refuse him, that people ignore his presence, ignore his invitation. Nevertheless, you know, God is a uh, a gentle God, a patient God, a merciful love, and he continuously renews his invitation, his presence. He comes and he comes again as a savior, and his heart is always filled with an infinite love. He continues to offer us this, uh, his forgiveness, his grace through the sacrament. And uh, in so many different ways, many different manners, he tells us, he renews his invitation by telling us that he's not, he has not come to condemn us, but to save us from sin. And how do we respond? We do respond with uh, our presence, our presence when we come to the church, our presence when we try to live in the presence of God in our daily life. We respond yes to this invitation when uh, we pronounce some beautiful words in our prayers, litanies, acts of contritions, devotions. We make promises. We sometimes, hopefully, make good resolutions. 
But this always goes with um, lukewarmness. It always goes with laziness, with procrastination, with a lack of perseverance. And it's how the same sadness is renewed in Jesus' heart. It's how his heart is once again broken with our ingratitude. So, my dear brethren, we have to meditate seriously on the response that we, go, that we give to God's invitation. He is gentle, he is delicate, he is polite. You know that uh, politeness is uh, the liturgy of charity. But the way we respond is our choice, and the choice is always our own. We can prefer comfort over conversion. We can be reluctant to let God work in our lives. But if we accept him, it's true that things will have to change. We will have to amend ourselves. We have to make good resolutions. Remember that uh, if God is with us, we have to cooperate with his divine will, which is not exactly ours. We have to change many things in our life. In Holy Scripture, you may remember the verse of the Psalm 120. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for fighting. So we do have to get rid of certain habits. We do have to moderate our appetites that invite temptations. We do have to be more prudent. And let me mention especially the use of, of TV, the use of internet, the use of uh, any device uh, that uh, certain, take, certainly take too much space uh, in our life, too much space in our family life, too much space in even our bedroom, including during night. It's how temptations are tolerated and invited. So if we say yes to God, we must really make these good resolutions. Remember, God gives us time here on earth to cooperate with His grace and to renew every day our desire to please him, to perform virtue in all things. Um, remember that all the tears that we are meditating upon today are tears of salvation. And God wants to renew his invitation to warn us from the final impenitence. You see, Sin only, sin is on the only sadness in life. Sin is the only enemy of our peace. Saint Augustine wrote, he who dies in a state of obstinacy is guilty of the sin against the Holy Ghost. So by final impenitence, we mean the perseverance in sin until death. We mean the determination on the part of the sinner not to repent. And this is what, what is called in Holy Scripture the unforgiven sin. So my dear brethren, let us take some time to consider Jesus' tears today. who He wept over Jerusalem, seeing the city, seeing those who were living into the city. He renews his shedding of tears when he sees that we are imprudent in our spiritual life. For the love of God, then, let us also implore God the grace of a perfectly contrite heart. Let us implore the gift of tears, of compunction, so that we may lament also our sins and merit forgiveness from God's mercy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.